Oi, 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 <laughs> I can't even do it more, bro. I can't do it anymore. I can't. <laughs> Jeez, oh, I want, is pig squealing still a thing? Yeah, man. So like it's you know, like you, um, you know you know how skating elevated to just this insane level where like everybody's doing combination tricks. Like I saw some guy do a sickening. wall ride. Front side nose blunt, like pop shove out or some shit like that, you down an incline thing. And I'm like, bro, like fucking hell, <laughs> dude. It's um yeah, like that type of shit is is uh people are getting crazy. Like like you say, it's it's just combination tricks. It's it's fucking like Tony Hawk pro skater. That's what's happening mm. right now. Where you like you know when you're doing all the tricks and at the bottom of the screen it's like Ollie nose manual, Nolly flip manual, fifty fifty Smith grind, a fucking t- t- manual, and then you hit a <laughs> half pipe, and then from a manual you're manualing up a half pipe, right? You then do a fucking nine hundred, you know? <laughs> then you land. That's the kind of shit that's happening in skating these days, man. Yeah. Um, it must. I mean, there's, there's. I'd think. All sports have a kind of similar thing, but a major um, playing part is your your sports that weren't conventionally popular or mainstream or accepted that are mm-hmm. now becoming accepted. So various academies and training programs are opening up and a whole lot of knowledge is being unlocked. And dudes are going zero to 100, dude, at, at skating. Um, MMA... 1000% has just again just it's it's wasn't too popular and over the past 10 years it's just lost its fucking mind but if you look at the level of the game over the last 4 years compared to the first 6 years it's fucking chalk and cheese dude like the dudes now would make the dudes 10 years ago look like fucking uh, Tony Hawk trying to like have a, a street session at 60 yeah imagine tony hawk releases a fucking street session at 60 that would be on par with like fucking uh downton abbey i think that's that's the only competition that would have like downton abbey or or P- P- adda lord adda <laughs> yeah isn't it funny to think that how um quickly everything compounds lately like mm. like the iphone was just the iphone and now we can integrate it with all these different things Dude. and how skating was you do maybe two combination tricks in one and try and do a variation of all those things to make them more appealing and whatever yeah but it's and it's... now it's like now it's just exploded to like a plethora of different variations yeah dude but <clears throat> with if you look at just the phone situation so there's this case um massive case that we have here in south africa um a murder took place uh, of senzo maiwa so <clears throat> he was the bafana bafana um goalkeeper so that's south africa's national football team um so he was their goalkeeper and he got murdered and this is like 10 years ago and in pure south african fashion you know it only hits court now like Mm. He got killed at the beginning of his career and his c- career, playing career would have ended and we, we still haven't gone to court. <laughs> <laughs> so in the whole thing, one of his mates was explaining, you know, the dudes that came inside because uh, it was a home robbery, home hit or whatever. And he's like, yeah, no, the first thing that they asked for were phones, were the phones, you know. So like in this day and age, it's like, okay, cool. You know, the phone, it's it's a fucking supercomputer. I was thinking, okay, so like 10 years ago, dude, <laughs> when you were asking, when you were robbing someone and taking their phone from them, 
Like, what the fuck were you taking it for? <laughs> there was nothing valuable in the thing. It was uh, dead tech. Um, like you say, I mean, the reason we can say that with hindsight is because it's just gone leaps and bounds since. But I was trying but have to you noticed like from, from our perspective to... is, is that there is no no one stealing phones anymore. Like they worth nothing. Yeah, well, I guess maybe like around the world and stuff, but in in South Africa, um, anything that is not attached to the ground is is worth mm -hmm. something. Like if it doesn't have a chain, a ball and chain on it, it's worth something. I'll give you a fucking example, dude. I put out a solar light um, on Saturday, and. Mm -hmm. It's dope in the grass. I don't need to attach it to anything. It's like planted in it and it, it works hundreds. And yesterday, Gardner came through, did the yard and shit. And after he kicks it, <coughs> we hit the yard, going to go feed the dogs. And I'm like, Where, where's the fucking solar light? <laughs> <laughs> so <coughs> I benefited the doubt, the dude. I'm like, nah, you know, maybe he was cleaning. Um, he put it somewhere. I forgot to put it back. So now I'm mm -hmm. looking and I'm benefiting of the uh, benefiting of the doubting this dude and every place that I look and it's not there, something inside me is just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's like, go to the next place, it's not there. Oh, God, please. You know, I don't have the energy to look for another fucking gardener because you stole from me. <laughs> look everywhere, it's not there phone the dude like hey did you see the solar light he's like yeah i took it and it's like well why the fuck did you take it <laughs> no i thought you weren't using it what do you mean i wasn't using the <laughs> thing it's a fucking outside light it was outside and now i'm not using it so <laughs> you can see the culture in south africa dude if if there's a little bit of lithium iron in that motherfucker or cobalt or just a small little solar panel um it's it's worth a a hit of that good shit, dude. That fucking fentanyl fucking kill you with one application. <laughs> Chocolate stuff! <laughs> ah, I'm so G, man. Mensa, Mensa, welcome, welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us. Welcome to the OG session. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, like the video if you haven't. Of course, turn your notifications on so you're notified whenever we drop new content. Um, so, yeah, man. It looks like platinum prices will surge as speculators bet will run short supply. Because there's such a plethora of mining deposit of platinum in South Africa, yet you guys don't have the power to power these mines. Oh god! The price of platinum will go up <laughs> because you can't supply power to the mines. Fuck! That's embarrassing, dude. And we have all the things inside the thing here. Um, I have a buck, dude. The Middle East did with oil, so <laughs> yeah, they did with oil. I mean, look, look. We, I mean, we've got the. It's not. I think South Africa's got the highest platinum deposits, eh? Yeah, in the in the world, and platinum prices have shot up as speculators bet that the power outages at South African mines are rising demand from auto makers, and the hydrogen industry will create uh, a supply shortage. As platinum is neutralized, uh, is used to neutralize harmful energy emissions. Did you know that the Cadillac converter inside your car in in an engine combustion car is coated with platinum? in order to reduce the carbon emissions that come out of your vehicle. That's yeah. why the the Shorleys steal the exhaust. Of course, <laughs> they, want the exhaust. they want that platinum, bruv. Oh fuck dude. And and um geez, it's they've been using platinum for decades now. Decades. Um, as far as like you say, it's it's got neutralizing components and shit for carbon and whatever. But with the advent of um, electric vehicles, it was projected that the demand for platinum would, would start dropping quite a bit, as there's not as many, there's no catalytic converters on an electric car. No well, emissions, platinum, of course. 
But Vladimir is at a 13 month high. <sighs> Dude. So. <laughs> Hey, I'm not complaining. I'm a platinum guy, yeah? So keep <laughs> searching, please. Surge, surge, surge. Hey, how how's this shit? You checked the, the US might be fucking defaulting on their debt. Oh, bro. Who's not defaulting on their debt? Like, let's be honest. <laughs> bro, like, like, with South Africa, when it comes to debt, we've been handed over to the lawyers. Like, we've been... Mm speaking with the lawyers for like 10 years like no oh, there was an interesting article that came out about how greece couldn't make their their debt payments um and they were going to go have one of those calamity um moments again when every the whole world oh, looked at greece goes why are you in so much debt and then greece <laughs> goes to germany for debt and then germany goes to austria for debt and then you know it's just this pass and buy you know oh yeah ecb banks uh yeah ECB Bank commissions the proposal for individual EU debt reduction paths. So Stockholm or the European Central Bank gave us initial support on Friday to change the EU fiscal rules to propose proposed by the EC that would give each country an individual debt reduction path to strengthen accountability and provide incentives for investment. I guarantee if you could actually look into the books of who owes who money, it will all circle to the number zero. Wow. And it's because all of this money is um <clears throat> are you talking about shit canceling each other out or it's it's just well, it's say all for instance, made up. Say for instance I bought something for I had to use a thousand dollars say a hundred dollars to buy this thing. Say I'm a country and I needed a hundred dollars to buy this thing to make my country better, but I don't have a hundred dollars. Mm. So I go to another country and I go, Can I have a hundred dollars? And they might say they have a hundred dollars, but they might go to another country and be like, I need a hundred dollars for <laughs> this thing. This thing. <laughs> so it might all turn out just to be zero, bro. Yeah, like if if you go down the rabbit hole far enough, someone eventually is gonna be like, Sorry, I don't have a hundred dollars. Like that's why you can that, that's why the only way to base the value, you need a tangible thin to base the value of your assets that's why materials and precious metals is such a high commodity mm. that's why i think south africa is in so much debt is because they've used they've leveraged the amount of mineral deposit they have against their debt ceiling mm. <clears throat> so we we basically as much as we have those minerals we haven't mined them and we're borrowing against mm. <clears throat> value that we haven't realized yeah hence it's so skewed plus interest plus interest and plus the interest for defaulting on the interest mm. yes dude but when but when when a mother or, or you and i default for like five percent that's a fucking end of the world the Jesus banks can't handle Christ, that dude. we're gonna close your account fucking helicopters out r5s mm. just <laughs> you'd swear it was like that scene from the matrix where the helicopter like <laughs> rises above the building like and then just starts <laughs> just fucking slugs for everyone, dude. I don't know if we um, touched on this last week, but New Zealand has one of the highest food prices in the world, according to a whole lot of people. I don't, I don't eat a lot of food, and I don't eat a lot of different food, so I know what my budget is, and I'm mm. pretty settled, you know. Mm. But. In, a, uh, in comparison to Australia, food is 25% more expensive in New Zealand, right? Even though, even though ag agriculture, wow. agriculturally speaking, we have the biggest grass feed beef um, farms around as well as um, Jeez, some, some veggies and dairy, right? The cost of bread, eggs, and milk is 40% higher alone than Australia. Jesus. F what? 40%. Not, 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 not 10, 15, Fuck. 40%. <clears throat> you know, um, the financial situation as far as the world in what generally you always want to try and make sure that you, you're 
not going to be affected by it. You're in a certain bubble. You make certain decisions, planning ahead. <clears throat> but this recent bout of increases seems to have hit fucking almost everyone. It's mm. because it's again, it's not just like let's say your food bill is a thousand dollars. Um, Jesus, that's a fucking lot. <laughs> let's say your food bill, maybe not in New Zealand. Maybe in New Zealand, that's nothing. Huh? That's like fuck. What the homeless spend on food a month is a thousand dollars. But let's say um, you spend $500 on food and it increases by 40%. So that increases by $200. That's now you're spending $700 on food. It's not just food that's gone up 40%. No, then it's fuel has gone up fucking 40%. That is energy to, to, to heat your, your home has gone up 40%. Then it's rates and taxes that have gone up. 40%. Then if you have any debt to service that debt as far as interest rate has gone up by a couple basis points. And once all of those accumulative increases happen, you know, health insurance, car insurance, school fees, um, just all when all of those things come together, you'll find that people that should be well off or comfortable um, are now starting to live quite close to the bread line. Yeah. So when we're thinking about the um, current financial issues around the date, everybody points to the fact that we were shut down globally because we had this unitary back in the day. Um, like, say, I can give you, I can only do this via examples because I don't have all the um, <clears throat> all the information. But Detroit was the largest car manufacturing hub in in the world back in the day. Remember how they would just fucking smash mm. out cars. And, 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 and most of the cars that they smashed out were pieces of shit, but they were like just Detroit was the spot, you know? Yeah. Like chrome fucking electric plate is everybody getting caught in gen and getting cancer. Like nobody gave a fuck, bro. No let's just cared, produce. Dude. They went let's to just the bar. make. Yeah, yeah. Let's just make. Why? Yeah. For the sole purpose to make. <laughs> just make. Yeah. And then. When global unitary um, collaboration ensued and somebody found out that they can get a material or a component for 500x cheaper from another place and it would just cost them the value of shipping, like why would I pay 500x when I can get the exact same thing or near similar mm. to get my widget out faster? Mm. And uh... I'm just here for making money. I'm not here for anything else. Enter China. Mm. <laughs> Enter China. 20 years. Well, look, they started with the uh, proper trade agreements and stuff from the 90s. But if you look, let's say solidly from the 2000s, General Motors. So these are all the companies that were deep in the Detroit car scene as far as building. Um, they basically propped up that area for decades to the mm. point where when, when the auto industry of Detroit collapsed. Detroit collapsed. <laughs> mm. It's like, think of uh, Toyota City in Japan. If Toyota's like, oh, fuck, we're going to have to liquidate. Toyota City is screwed. It's like, where's everyone going to work? They're going to just be like digging for like platinum in, in the, the exhaust pipes of old Corollas. That's, that's the only way they'd be able to make an income. So in Detroit's case, um, <clears throat> this is when General Motors, about 20 years back, and they didn't start then, but this is when they started with like a full car and it started taking on. But Chevrolet's um, Spark was completely made in China. And this is like 20 years back. And the build quality on the thing was horrific. It was these cheap plastics and all of that type of stuff. But, like you're saying, if it's going to cost you 500x less, and even if it's not as good of a product, but it's near enough that, that most people won't, won't mind, um, why would they do it anywhere else? And hence, yeah. General Motors went into this whole um, cheap, terrible production stage. Cheap plastics, bad fit and finish, um, 
no thought or consideration given into the the quality of materials, the look of interiors, etc. They got stuck in that cheap production aspect, whereas Germany was just ramping it up and getting better and better and better and better. And <clears throat> now you're in a position where General Motors is paying playing such catch up. It's not even fucking funny, dude. Fifteen years ago, GM was fucking like a colossus the the brands that they had under them colossus dude buick fucking um chevrolet uh christ well crisis was, was with the jeep group but i think back then they were all together before they split and stuff mm. it's, it's um it's look it was a, a big decision that they took but it ultimately i think it cost them their company yeah they're now yeah. having to play catch up with everyone and most of the youth have forgotten about them because the youth are only interested in foreign. Me, I got where my foreign. I want my foreign, man. Let's still, man. Let's still, man. The possibility or the probability of what may occur if the largest comp- uh, country that we base most of our trading on, which is the US dollar goes away what would happen like what what would you think would happen so let's let's split the world into four different countries four different types of countries so Mm -hmm. you've got countries like you say that are reliant in the u.s um you've then got or let's say you've got the u.s (laughs) which is the first type of country so superpowers then countries that are reliant on superpowers, then you've got countries that are merely just aware of these superpowers, and then you've got countries that just don't give a fuck about these superpowers. So if we had to mm. just break them up quick, superpower America, reliant on superpower, fucking insert blank, let's say Canada, <clears throat> um, aware of superpower um, will be like a country like Belgium, or some of the Nordic regions where they're aware, but they're not like jumping on the bandwagon. They're just just watching. <laughs> and then the fourth, they don't give a fuck. That's like Toga or <laughs> Fiji. You know, they're just like, what is this US? What? F- what? Fuck off, man. Just leave us alone, okay? We have beautiful beaches, beautiful women. Leave us alone. So from those four types of countries... Superpower America loses their ranking in the world, <clears throat> and now the dollar as a uh, currency or a common denominator, because the dollar is basically a common denominator amongst um, all of the modern worlds when it comes to quantifying their current currencies and financial situations. So dollar falls away. Immediately, Canada is affected as far as, I'd say, products and import and export because they do sell a lot of their products to America. If America's dollar is affected, it means that the public public of America are going to be affected because this would happen from defaulting, etc. Um, <clears throat> interest rates getting crazy, people not able to outrun inflation. Now, you go to the next type of country, which is a country that's aware of America. So let's say, um, again, let's say fucking Belgium um, or Iceland. They're aware of America, but they haven't structured their economy where America's the be-all and end-all. They've still kept themselves at the, the pinnacle or the on the pedestal of their economy. And again, they use the dollar but they only use the dollar because they have to. <laughs> yeah. They preferably trade with you in whatever, Icelandic francs. I don't know what, it, what the fuck the currency is, but they'd happily rather do that. But there's this fucking person called America that is in every meeting. Even when you request them not to be in the meeting, they're the fucking meeting. And it's <laughs> like, okay, you know what? Let's just fucking use the dollar. Otherwise, we're not going to get any more, like, fertilizer for our beautiful green lands and stuff <clears throat> then you've got the fourth country that just doesn't know doesn't care doesn't give a fuck 
And that's like mm-hmm. Somalia. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Somalia knows a lot about Americans and tend to, to kidnap them um, when times <laughs> are tough. But let's say fucking Fiji. <laughs> it's like shit happens. It's wow, whoa, those dudes over there. But they've got, I think Fiji's got a better perspective on the whole thing. Now, I understand everything works around and, you know, the world economy is so integrated and so connected that just removing one piece from that puzzle could be like result in, in a calamity for years for, for our financial system to correct itself. But countries that just don't give a fuck and focus on what they do and on their own thing are generally happier countries. These are happier nations, happier countries, because they're not burdened with the fucking struggles and the issues of the world. You know, they focus on their people, they focus on their own missions, and hence they they are happy. You know, it, it's <clears throat> America's supposed to be the freest place on earth, yet it has some of the most unhappy people on earth you know and and it could be more from a perspective of just what the news cycle is doing where everything coming out of the news cycle is negative and your brain is like <clears throat> you live in in fucking um connecticut in america and your neighborhood your city your life is good you know you wake up Dude drops the, the <clears throat> newspaper on your lawn, you know. You walk your dog, you go for a jog. After that, you have a shower, you go have a coffee. And then from there, you go into work, you know. So it's it's chilled, it's easy, it's it's a nice life. I'm not saying you're rich or anything, but things are, are easy and things are attainable and you've got access to these things, which is much more than most of the world has. But now what the news does is it programs your brain into feeling fucking fight or flight the entire time because whenever you just look at the... Oh, AI is going to start to eat your children, you know? <laughs> um, oh, the, the, the newspaper guys aren't going to be delivering newspaper anymore. They don't want to deliver the newspaper because they feel it's, it's infringing on their rights of not having to deliver newspaper. And now you're preoccupied with all of these potential negative situations that haven't even happened yet. Haven't even happened yet. But you're so preoccupied by them that you now forget to enjoy that run that you have with your dogs in the morning where you're not worried about being robbed or raped or or mugged. That newspaper being delivered on your lawn every day, same time, dude greets you. That coffee that you have with the same chick who serves you that coffee every day at the coffee store. You're now so distracted by shit that actually doesn't really matter to you or affect you that you are now shitting on everything good in your life. Yeah, it has many different implications and many different ways, many different outcomes. There's an amazing thing that I heard today that made me think about it a lot. It goes, and it was basically around the fact that these AI chatbots, which is AI generated chatbots are actually grabbing data from across the network and snipping and putting it together and giving you an answer. So the likelihood of the information you get may be somewhat correct, but it's not, not everything is correct on it. And in saying that, in order, and this is and this is what got me, in order for anything to be correct, there has to be something that's incorrect. <clears throat> Say that again. In order for anything to be correct or true, there has to be something that's incorrect and false. So just as <clears throat> um Sunny days wouldn't feel so good if it wasn't for rain. Exactly. Sunny days wouldn't feel so good if it wasn't for rain. In order for there to be black, there needs to be white. Mm. In order for there to be wrong, there needs to Mm. be right. 
And so there's somewhat of a codependency against the affliction or the conflict between what you perceive as correct and what you perceive as incorrect or true and false and mm. the great thing about human life is you get to navigate that realm you are manipulated through that realm you get to make fundamental choices within that realm you get to move the pieces on your chessboard and sometimes you may get somebody else to move the pieces on your chessboard if you willingly please to do so. So it was quite an interesting fact to note that, and it basically comes down to the, the mindset is you make your life what it is, not the other way around. So sure I enough, think you, everyone needs people to, have. Yeah, I think every, you just need to look at it like the chess example that you just gave. So think of your life as a timed chess match where you have ultimate freedom over what you do, but you only have a finite time to do it before life moves you on itself. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, cool, there's my piece. Okay, I can go left, right, up, down, fucking whatever. Um, and if you take too long to make the decision, eventually the board moves for you and it just goes forward. Because <laughs> yep. all the board wants you to do is make, make, make. Just go forward. Mm. Why? Just go forward. I'd be going for the queen. I don't know. Just go forward. You know? <laughs> and Amen. this goes back to what we've discussed in the past where, you know, being indecisive is a decision. It, being indecisive is not neutral. You know, the world doesn't stop and freeze because you have. It keeps going. Keeps, keeps going. Um, consequences are not avoided by um, <clears throat> consequences. Staying not, stagnant. Exactly. They're not avoided by staying stagnant or not wanting to move forward. Something will still happen, um, whether you do something or not. And most likely, if you do nothing, it's not going to be an outcome that you'll be too happy with. But once you realize that you actually do have the power to move your own chess pieces, um, it's liberating. But unfortunately yeah. for some, it's so liberating to the point where people almost not have mental breakdowns. But That's anxiety-provoking, kind of, right? Yeah, you almost can't fathom the power that you have. Yeah. You, you can't yeah. accept... Um, <clears throat> fathom the power that you have. And again, this could come from the fact like, wow, like the power I have, I could actually change the world. Holy shit. You know, versus <clears throat> you feeling um, yeah, so it's, it's change the world or the opposite feeling is <clears throat> I can't believe I, like, you, you don't want to accept, because with accepting power comes accepting responsibility. So if you accept the fact that you can take your life in any direction you would like to, you mm -hmm. also have to make the same exception for um, all of the wrong directions and the bad outcomes that took place. Because ultimately, you made them happen. Just as you can make the future happen, you probably made your past happen. <laughs> Very and much. That kind of agency um, <clears throat> is slightly taken away from us. Not, not as bad as it used to, but slightly taken away from us as children to kind of keep us in line, keep society going, etc. But... In order to accept that power and break through those chains, you have to accept the terrible things that have happened as a result of you making decisions, good or bad. Um, yeah, the, the tools you will use to create a new version of yourself anytime is the willingness and the desire to learn fueled by the passion that you will become successful. Yeah. I mean, I was explaining and to someone at um, <clears throat> kickboxing the other night as to say, 
Oh, fuck. Say that line again. <laughs> <laughs> the tools you will use in your life to create a new version of, you, of yourself are the willingness and the desire to learn fueled by yes. the passion to become successful. So that's what I was explaining. Um, I was like, you know, I didn't put it right, but I was like, you know, one of my biggest fears in life is growing old. And I define old as people who wish who no longer wish to learn. People who no longer wish to learn anything new by default are old. <laughs> by process of elimination, are old you know there's there's some fascinating cognitive um neurology coming out that according to the research states that when you become 65 or 70 or whatever basically when you become technically um known as old when you retire what when you retire you don't <laughs> when you're retarded jesus dude yeah, that's but... fucking not nice what's wrong with you man <laughs> i'm i'm, I'm oldest at the moment i'm oldest jesus christ <laughs> anyway the data suggests that usually at this typical time at that age you tend to drop out the amount of challenges that you start facing in your life so they had yeah. a they had somebody basically they had a few the cohort was just a few people and they were ch checking their blood and their gray and their gray matter and ch checking in on them, and then all of a sudden they started putting these small challenges in their life. Like an example is going a teacher going back to school and and teaching, you know, mm. after ten years going back and teaching a class. Mm. And what they noticed is that the gray matter started lighting up a lot more beforehand because they actually were challenged by the fact that oh. I have to do this. I have to present myself well. I have to articulate the information mm -hmm. and start going through these thought patterns of what your brain actually has to do in order to work. But as soon as you stop mm -hmm. trying to be, um, trying to put yourself in challenging circumstances or stop the desire to find something out or learn something or find a passion or purpose, whatever you want to fucking call it, you tend to become stagnated and you tend to become old and rigid um anyway so that was an interesting um thing that came out of neurology no it's but but it's um that is is perfectly right i i don't know how many um like ed people let's be politically correct i don't know how many people ad rather advanced in the field of, of age and years i've seen where like you say Maybe been retired for a couple years or whatever, um, and they get an opportunity to go back. So whether it's uh, contracting or consulting, which which usually happens a lot, you consult with a company that you worked with previously, um, <clears throat> or like you mentioned, you go back to the school that you were teaching at because they've got a teacher shortage, or you're just like fuck, let's go back. The level of excitement that is stirred and encouraged from within these people is beautiful i mean i'm talking like elderly dudes combing their hair properly you know they actually put on a, a pair of pants that has like a zip and a button and it's like needs a belt it's not just stretch pants <laughs> they <laughs> but they they take it so seriously because i would think they haven't been challenged in so long that they get bored. That's usually what causes people to come back to work is, like you say, you retire, you go to the beach, you're sipping cocktails. There's only so many cocktails you can sip on before you're like, okay, um, what next? <laughs> mm -hmm. So when they generally do make those decisions, they enter the working world um, with... Mm -hmm the same level of enthusiasm that an 18 or 19 year old would be entering the working world with only yeah. difference of course is they've got like 40 years of fucking experience um in doing the thing yeah, but there's a couple other things you, but another you thing of being old is is like there's an example of you not exercising your brain so <clears throat> your brain gets rusty or gets a bit tight etc rigid you know you're not learning anything new so all you're doing is reinforcing old ideas no matter how good bad or ugly they are and it's the same thing with the body you know you stop 
giving your body resistance. So meaning standing up, sitting down, stretching, going for a walk, going for a run. These are the kind of resistances we're talking about. And then you notice that you're sitting in your desk and you just got this fucking pain in your back. You don't know where it came from, why it's there. But um, you have it. You keep it for two, three years. You act like it's nothing. You ignore it. Um, You don't try and learn something new in the body, being where you go somewhere and stretch that muscle that's not working right. You just leave it as it is. And then when you're 65, you wonder why you look like this. (laughs) <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> you wonder why none of your jackets fit you the same. They all stop here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's purely just because you allowed yourself to get old. Now, the beautiful thing is, guys, like a lot of things in this life, there is a way out. There is a cure. There's there's a corrective measure you can take. Um, not all damage is permanent um i mean for example something as hectic as your lungs you know smoking um there's like studies where if you quit smoking and live a kind of a decent lifestyle within a period of about five years three to five years your lung tissue should have all completely regenerated to the point where your lungs are almost, if not as healthy, almost as healthy as a non-smoker's lungs. And that's in three to five years. Whereas if you continued smoking, you could have died in 12 months. So yep. no, nothing is um, nothing is forever, guys, except gout. <laughs> gout is forever. Like if you get gout, hey, dude, hey, dude. Yes, yes. But no. remember remember it becomes a choice again like this is what i don't understand and th- I, and in a lot of ways sometimes i feel hyper hypocritical and condescending when i say this but mm. gout and comes from let's let's many... just qualify that statement guys we're right. not speaking as experts we're not speaking as these fucking weird influences on tiktok and stuff just be ha- just just go roll in the grass when last did you yeah. roll in the no, we're speaking as flawed individuals who have made all of them all of the mistakes we reference on this show we have made. All of the mistakes pretty much okay, not the murder and the rape, but other mistakes we've pretty much made. And we are simply giving you advice based on corrective measures we have taken, but also based on non bias corrective measures that we know we should be taking but aren't because again we're not perfect continue so let's just understand for the the listeners out there and the people that are probably going to be like these fucking wankers talking shit again (laughs) um anyway gout is a type of arthritis right it's caused by an accumulation of uric acid crystals in the joint. The uric acid is the waste product that is produced when the body breaks down purines, which are found in many foods and beverages such as the meat, seafood, and alcohol. Normally, uric acid dissolves in the blood and is excreted from the body through when you piss. However, in some people's bodies, they produce too much uric acid, or the kidneys do not extrude enough, leading to a buildup of uric acid in the blood and formation of uric acid in the joints. Gout uh. can be caused by a combination of genetic and lifestyle factors, but the lifestyle factors are overwhelming. So the first lifestyle factor, Jay, guess what it is? Come on, it's the number one factor okay, of everyone's lifestyle. Number one lifestyle. fucking factor of anyone's lifestyle is you don't piss enough. Like you hold your urine too long. I think that's... <laughs> That's what causes gout. Like it, when you need the bathroom, you don't go. So the uric acid goes somewhere else. And then you got like sore joints. <laughs> Come on. All right. Let's do okay. this. The lifestyle number one thing 10... is inflammation. Lifestyle 101. Infla-fucking-mation. What you, what you put in this thing. What is this? That... <laughs> it is meat hole, guys. <laughs> meat hole. Anyway. Your diet. So anybody can change their life. 
It's the same thing with exercise. You can exercise as much as you want, but if you're in a caloric surplus day in, day out, you will not lose the weight. That's the first rule of thermal dynamics. Energy however, in, energy out. However, just, just for all the dudes that aren't losing the weight, it is better than sitting on your ass, okay? You're, yeah, you're getting the great, health benefits. Great. You're just not... There are other... There are other benefits besides yes. fa- weight loss. Oh, exactly. well, that's a caveat. All right. Guess what this number number sec number two is? What? Like, which is li- which is another lifestyle. Come on, Jay. You should so know this a- about gout. But I don't Come on. live, okay? All I do is just sit here and like criticize other people for things. <laughs> so all right. okay, we, gout. We all first know one is diet. Yeah. Okay. Second one is Alcohol? Come I on. don't know. Alcohol's always there. Ding, 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 ding. I got it right! I got it right! <laughs> Alcohol consumption, drinking beer, wine, and liquor have been linked to the increase of gout. That's number two, guys. That's just so, number two. Guys, let's just think about that because the misconception is that the number one cause of gout is alcohol. And we're not saying that this lessens alcohol's effect on gout. No, 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 no. But people forget that just as Mr. Boer just lovely told you, you know, everything starts with what you put in your meat hole. It starts with the meat in the hole before the alcohol. And you can avoid things by having a balanced approach. So you have a, a very healthy diet, which means that you can binge drink at least two even three times a, ba- a week it's just, even just a balanced diet is fine balanced diet, diet and you could binge drink as much as you want no no you know no, no, no. You, can't, you can't binge drink no, no. <laughs> sorry i don't i don't, I don't no, agree with that statement you can't, you can't like what what's a little bit of knee pain you know for like the greatest night of your life you know like don't you want to have the greatest night of your life <laughs> another 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 interesting um, factoid about um, neurology um, is that it's now suggested that the that alcohol is so detrimental for the body that it's suggested. Now this is the extreme, and I understand this is extreme. But I I used to drink. I don't drink very often anymore. I might have one beverage every month or something like that. Okay, but it's now recommended that to not overconsume more than two alcoholic beverages per week <clears throat> that's how detrimental <throat> ethanol and alcohol is to your body yes. okay it's recommended you can look at it you can find it out it's fine whatever and whenever somebody says like you can have a bit of red wine and it's going to help your body it doesn't it's bullshit don't yeah. listen to them they just what yeah. i would suggest guys is you don't listen to joshua and you listen rather to the advertising moguls because yeah. Yeah. You know, Hennessy will make people, you successful. Hennessy, Hennessy is going to make you buy a Bentley, okay? Yeah. One day, because you drink Hennessy, you're going to buy yeah. a Bentley, right? Yep. <laughs> so, and for people that, are, people that don't understand the advertising world, it's all about a status. Mm. I'm holding the Hennessy <clears throat> bottle. I look very cool. Everybody must think I look very cool. Dude, you know what? One of the... Most, I think it's the first time I've actually seen whiskey advertised like this. <laughs> and I thought it was brilliant. So whiskey is always advertised as you're having it neat as it is, potentially on the rocks. And this is regardless of the, the quality of the whiskey. So even like your cheap entry levels, they're like, have it on the rocks, have it neat, etc. The ones that are like $10 a bottle, $15 a bottle. And there's this South African brand. Um, it's got the most amazing name. <laughs> Monkey Shoulder is the name of the whiskey. <laughs> I don't know what brand it is, but I don't know if it's SA or whatever. But it's called Monkey Shoulder. And it's it's such a dope ad. Because it's like in a bar, what, 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 as most alcohol ads are. <laughs> But he's got it like on, on a turntable and he's got this drink on a turntable and he's basically pouring dash in it. And they're like, <clears throat> you know, monkey shoulder. Um, this like this is a drink that you mix 
So don't, they're basically saying, don't drink our whiskey neat because you you will die, okay? You may die. It may kill um, shit in your body. You have to dash it. I thought it was actually smart. I've never seen a whiskey company advertise that their shit should be dashed. Oh, two pieces of tidbits on that one. Monkey Shoulder is actually from Scotland. It's a... Uh, um it's made by William Grant and Sons. They made they've been making whiskey for years. Oh, um, okay. and it's made out of three different spa- uh, space side single malt whiskeys. And so I'll have blend. you know that I've drank Monkey Cholo straight, and it's quite good. What? So why are they why are they advertising it like it's Jace fluid? Why why the fuck not? They trying to capture a different market, bro. Facts. Why the fuck not? Facts, dude. Facts. Because right, the, so the, the third, truth of the matter what's, what's is... What's the third lifestyle um, thing for gout? Let's think. For gout. Lack of exercise. Which is a tribute to the third one, obesity. Being overweight or obese can increase mm. the risk of gout as well as other health conditions such as high blood pressure and diabetes. And there was, there was this... I don't know if you saw it, Jay, but there was this bo- body positivity woman. She was, she was too, she was over, she was like super obese. Like she was literally a fucking human. 100, large she was four, and you know what? Respect, respect, respect. 400 pounds, okay? She weighed as much as a motorbike. <laughs> you know what's really funny? She was had this whole fucking um, channel on body positivity. Everybody must have body positivity because it's not unhealthy to eat whatever you want and however much you want. <laughs> yeah. You fucking caked it, bro. You fucking caked it. Yeah, I think... Caked um, it at 27 years old. She cakes it. Do you want to live until 27? Do you want to be a fucking fat fuck and, like at the age of 27? Jesus, dude. And Fuck <clears throat> that, man. Uh, I think a lot of people don't realize and this is maybe the the i guess the gift and the curse of being young is um you don't have the <clears throat> or the curse of being young you don't have the gift and the curse you don't have the um benefit of hindsight um you take the future for granted and let's say 400 pounds right which is about 190 kilograms guys 190 kilograms and we're talking in all of this weight on someone whose height is like five foot five or five foot four. Like she's got the height of a flyweight. <laughs> the height of a flyweight. And those dudes weigh about 60, uh, <clears throat> 61 kilos. She's that tall, but weighs three times as much. as. Just think about it. So at 27, your body might be able to kind of pull the wool over your eyes. Um, where it still functions, but <laughs> eventually, you know, nothing's forever, guys. This heart that's in the chest and the kidneys and the things we have, they've only got a finite lifespan. And in order to live, they have to live. And in order for them to live, you have to spread out their workload. As far as the amount of work these things are doing to digest food, to burn energy, to stop you from dying, you know, because your body is stopping you from dying. It doesn't mean you, you're, you're healthy. No, it's stopping you from dying, which is a lot of work for the heart to do, to stop you from dying at 27 because you're 190 kilos. That's Eventually... The mileage gets so extreme on these things mm. that unfortunately obesity leads to premature death nearly all of the time. Because once you start hitting your 40s, 50s, you know, your heart has been keeping you alive, all right? For 50 years now and for the past 30 years, it's been keeping three people alive a day. At 50, that motherfucker's tired. Right? That motherfucker's like, you know, Lord, whatever must be, will be. You know? (laughs) And by then, unfortunately, it may be too late to the point where you either suffer a life-threatening illness, which you now have to live the next 30 years of your life with, 
or unfortunately, of course, you end up passing away from that. And <clears throat> this is someone speaking as, I mean, I, in my 20s, uh, got a, a bit on the heavy side and my brain did not change. So I was still running as I ran, doing things as I did them at the speed I did them when I was lighter, but with a whole lot of weight on top of me. And again, the body can fool, the mind can fool, but certain things start to take a toll. Um, <clears throat> and if you continue like that, it's only think of a car, an engine, you know, if you towing two cars with that engine every day for 30 years, like <laughs> something's going to break. Something's going to break. So it's an interesting factor because the next one on the list is genetics. Now, if we go down the path of genetics, you can literally talk for the end of time. The main the general thing just... is don't, and this is like you say, we can go crazy on this one, but the main thing is don't ever use genetics as an excuse, guys, because most people escape genetics. As much, I'm not saying it doesn't have an effect, but most people have bad genetics in one form or the other and escape it. So whether it's through preventative measures and then you don't catch diabetes etc or um you just manage it better so you get diabetes young because of genetics but you now manage it better so that you don't die at 11 so if we touch on genetics just quickly um Obviously, when you're saying that cause mobility, such as gout, runs in the family and variations of it can cause developing conditions. If you think about genetics, it's, it's a gene pass in one gene to another gene, right? So when you have an X and Y, when, when, when you and your mom fuck and they make you, they pass it on their gen. When their you and your you. mom fuck, what did you just <laughs> say? When you and your mom fuck. I, I was hoping you wouldn't notice that. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Fuck! Did YouTube's gonna take this down. What are you? What is wrong with you? No, no, no. Jay, Jay, just take that out. Let me, 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 let me edit that. Just take it out. <laughs> when a male and a female um... that are not wow. related. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's up to them. <laughs> They pass on their genes and they make another human being or they make another thing. Um, and there was some interesting da data that came out recently that the, the genetics that are passed on can alter decision-making and pass on pre-existing conditions. So if, if you have gout because of genetics, it's because your previous heritage was prone to a bad lifestyle drinking mm. being obese mm. and and dietary things so if if you choose to break that cycle and you choose to have children the likelihood of the, of you passing on that gene is very low but if you carry mm. on the cycle that happened previously down your past heritage mm. you're just passing on the shit to your to your young ones mm. why would you do that and i think this is where people need to um <clears throat> you can almost forward slash genes as habits it's mm. like a habit throughout your <clears throat> your and like your heritage and your ancestral heritage um in this case the habit was an unhealthy lifestyle mm. you're then told young oh you're gonna get gout anyways you know <laughs> you know i don't know how many folks i've heard said ah oh, you're gonna go bald anyways you know i went bald when i was 17 you you'll be lucky if you make it to 25 you know, and dudes then don't care about their hair and then end up going bald by 21. And it's, it's, yeah, it's my job. Oh, my dad was bald. It's like, yeah, your dad was bald. Not you, dude. Like, <laughs> try, make an effort. You know, it's, um, everyone has genes, good or bad. But in order for those genes to properly activate, 
you have to make an effort. You have yeah. to make an effort for the, the, the right. for the good habits and the good traits to show themselves. You have to make an effort for the bad to ones to not show themselves. You have to make an effort. Otherwise, as Josh says, all that you are doing, you're not passing down bad genes. You're passing down bad habits. And that is fucking mm. detrimental to a family is fucking bad habits, dude. And you can display those bad habits when you even um, procreate and your children are born and they are exposed to those bad habits, which you are reinforcing the habit once again. Now, mm. they still get the choice to break the cycle or not. But yes. being exposed to that, is it may be detrimental. Mm. <clears throat> no, 100%. And I just it's... wanted to touch on, touch on the um, genetics role here. There's growing body of research suggestion that genetics can play a dis- play a role in decision making, and that certain genetic variations may be associated with increased risk for certain behaviors and conditions such as addiction, impulsivity, and obesity. Additionally, there is evidence to suggest that lifestyle factors such as diet, exercise, and stress can have an impact on gene expression and contribute to the development of certain health conditions. One way in which genetics can impact decision making is through variations in neurotransmitted systems, such as the dopamine and serotonin systems, which are involved in reward processing and mood regulation. For example, a certain gene variation in the dopamine system have been linked to the increase of addiction and e- impulsivity, while variations in the serotonin system have been associated with mood disorders such as depression and anxiety. In terms of lifestyle factors, studies have shown that diet, exercise and stress can all impact gene expression and contribute to the development of health conditions such as obesity, type 2 diabetes, type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. For example, a diet in high processed foods and sugar can be linked to inflammation and insulin resistance, which can com- contribute to the development of these conditions. Similarly, chronic stress has been shown to alter gene expression in ways that contribute to mood and disorder and health conditions. Overall, The relationship between genes, lifestyle, and decision-making is complex and multifaceted. The further research is needed to fully uh, understand these factors and interact to to contribute to health outcomes. You know, so it was just a bit of a tidbit. And the last one on the list is obviously medical medical conditions which are predisposed to genetics, once again, or lifestyle factors. Mm. And again, it's it's not your dad had cancer, you're going to get cancer. No, it's your dad had cancer. You have a high chance of getting cancer. So try not to get cancer. (laughs) It's the changing of the, it's the changing of the mindset, right? Yeah. You can either live your life in fear and believe that you're going to get cancer one day, Mm. or you can do all you can. And there still might be a chance, but at least Mm. you did all you can to try and not get cancer. 100%. 100%. I mean, hey, and cancer's a fucking rough one, dude. <clears throat> like, like let, 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 not let's many choose a things, pathway. Not you many go down a pathway are of, of fear and anxiety, mm. or you go down a pathway of challenge and reward. <clears throat> you get to choose. Mm. And you choose on a daily basis. Like, no one, nobody wakes up every single day happy with their life. Not, mm. not every single day. Some mm. people most of the time, some people not most of the time, Mm, yeah, but it's think, your choice in the matter to to mm, think what you want to know. And is it almost a factor of, <clears throat> you know, if you don't wake up on the right side of bed or whatever, you need to challenge yourself harder than whatever's making you feel negative. So, like, if you feel heavy about something and you go and, like, for a 10-kilometer run <laughs> and you're, like, exhausted afterwards... Not have you just run out all of those emotions and feelings, but <clears throat> you've um, you've, you've given, removed yourself from the environment and and changed your outlook essentially 100%. because you're not you're not focusing on it. You're not exactly you're not focusing on it, and you're doing something that is harder and more challenging than what you thought had you beat. And you're doing something more challenging. So when you're done with it, God willing, you're able to look back at whatever had you feel defeated or beat 
and kind of be like, you know what, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not um it's not cancer. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not that bad. I'm gonna still be alive tomorrow. Um and hopefully just approach it with a bit more of a positive approach, better energy, um, which will result in a in a better outcome ultimately. Mm. On that note. Yes, Ben, sir. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, Again, it's been the OG session. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please turn your notifications on so you're notified whenever we drop new content. Um, And like the video if you liked him. If you liked him. The Friday Fade, out this week, Friday, 6 p.m. Happy May, everybody. Um, Have a beautiful week, and we shall see you in the next one.